Welcome back Petapixel viewers. Today we're looking at the newly launched OM system OM1 Mark II. Now this camera is actually very similar to the original OM1, so much so that a lot of people are saying, well, couldn't this have just been a firmware update? So today we are going to play Canada's favorite game show. Could it have been done with firmware? Now here in Alberta, we've had a bit of a cold snap. We always have chilly winters, but luckily Hawkland Photography Clothing has hooked us up with a really nice jacket system here. And at the heart of this is actually three layers. I got the fleece here, I got my inner puffy jacket, and then my durable outer shell. So first off the outer layer, I'm liking this sort of muted red tone. This is the Albert Dross edition of this parka. And this is a big upgrade over their previous parka, especially for more inclement weather. So first off, this has fully taped seams. It'll handle rain, snow, sleet, even better than the original parka. This is also rated down to minus 25 Celsius, which in Alberta is basically every day of the week. So that's also really, really nice. And both the inner puffy jacket and the outer jacket have a clip here right on the sleeve to hold a microfiber cloth. Now with all three layers, this is really cool. We actually get a mini camera camera bag on the inside of each jacket. So I've got battery storage, I've got memory cards, I've got my microphone in here. The jacket's actually quite quiet even with the mic. Storage for gloves as well. It's really nice. As well, the puffy jacket and the outer parka, I can actually zip these together. And this is nice just to kind of give me some convenience so that I can take them both off at the same time, put them both on if I'm gonna be in really cold weather. Okay, so let's get back to the video. We're just gonna see how this gear takes care of us in this cold weather. It is supposed to get warmer though, so that's nice. I'll be able to take these layers off, which is kind of a beauty of the system as well. And you guys will get a strip show, so that'll be fun. So let's get to it. Woo! Now, at first glance, the OM-1 Mark II does look basically the same as the OM-1, but there is one noticeable difference. There's no Olympus badge here anymore, and I think a big reason why they're coming out with this second version is really because they want to start getting all of the Olympus name off their products and really move into just OM system. And you can't just take the name away on a camera. you got to add some features. And you know what? These do have some changes, both external and internal, that we're going to talk about. But one thing that I do want to point out, inside, we do have extra RAM now installed on the board here and that should unlock some processing capabilities. So it isn't just firmware necessarily, but maybe a lot of it could be. Okay, so this does look a lot like the OM-1, but there is one physical change that you'll find here, and that is the front and rear command dial. So on the previous OM-1, a lot of people, myself included, found that sometimes those plastic command dials were a little bit hard to turn, especially with bare skin or gloves like this, it would just slide on there. So I got these Hawkland inner liners right now, they give you the dexterity to manipulate controls, they've rubberized these dials, and I notice a big difference. There's no slippage at all, it's easy to turn. You know, like even if I have just my bare skin here, no problem at all. I feel like it's a more positive response. That's nice plus, and can it be done in firmware? No. So before you would get blackout free shooting in 25 frames per second and 50 frames per second, which is great when you're trying to track fast moving subjects, you know, uh, sports, action, wildlife kind of stuff. You don't want to lose the field of view. However, what a lot of people are saying is, can we get that at slower frame rates? We don't always want to shoot 30 frames per second. So the OM-1 Mark II now does also give you blackout free shooting at 12 and a half or 16 frames per second. And this is really nice because, you know, I often shoot 10 frames per second mechanical shutter mode on these cameras, but of course you get the shutter blackout. Being able to keep a conservative number of shots like that, say 12 and a half, but get blackout free, that's fantastic. Now, could this be done in firmware? Absolutely, yes. And I really hope they bring it to the original OM-1 as well. Whew. I mean, it's been cold morning, but the sun's coming out, so you know what that means. You can't beat that music. All right, so we had a beautiful opportunity here to catch one of North America's greatest birds, the North American freedom chicken. Nice and close, not obscured behind trees, beautiful stuff. And so it gave us a nice opportunity to test some of the autofocusing capabilities here on the OM-1 Mark II. So one of the big changes is that the autofocus has been improved across the board. And this is what I can say first off. Uh, tracking, this was a weakness that we always have had on Olympus and OM system cameras. Subject detection works great, following birds, animals, that kind of stuff when you set it properly, but actually just tracking inanimate objects, it always would just drift off and lose it. So we did a test here and actually we're finding with the tracking autofocus, it is definitely stickier. Yes, occasionally it will still get lost, but really in busy situations. Otherwise though, I would say this is definitely something I would use I would never use it in the past on the older Olympus and OM system cameras. Now in the previous OM-1, I did 
did find that tracking as well as subject detection worked really well, where I could just put a box on a subject and then it would actually take over if it detected it. Now on the OM1 Mark II, what we're actually finding instead is you cannot combine tracking autofocus with the subject detections. With subject detections, you can just simply choose a zone. And actually in the case of this majestic bald uh, Patriot goose flying across, I just had a nice big zone, the whole screen, and actually tracked it really nicely, 25 frames per second. I got a lot of good shots all in focus. So I would say, although it's a difference from the own one, I can absolutely rely on this. Now, one last little quality of life change they've made is adding human detection into the subject detection menus. Now, it doesn't seem to be the kind of like human detection we see with other brands where it does torso, body kind of stuff. It still clearly says it'll just focus on people's uh, faces and eyes, but I do like that I don't have to go out of the subject detection menu into face detect for portrait and then out of face detect and back into the subject detection menu. That's always a pain in the butt. I hate it on the Fuji films. I hate it on the older Olympic cameras so I'm really happy to see it here in the same menu. So with all of these changes being done now to the OM1 Mark II, I mean this is compelling stuff. Now can it be done in firmware? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if this is a new algorithm that could be updated. I don't know if it's because of the extra RAM, better processing power. It's hard to say, but I absolutely hope it is just firmware because I would love to see this come to the older OM cameras, but otherwise this is a great reason to get a Mark II. Now, while I was shooting a lot of wildlife around here, I appreciate absolutely the blackout free shooting at slower frame rates. That's been really nice, but also the extra stable IBIS that we have in this camera. Although that is the experience every time I have used an Olympus or OM system camera, like excellent IBIS, very stable platform to shoot with. Originally, way back in the day, Olympus said they could never go past eight stops because of the Coriolis effect of the earth. I mean, I don't know. So I guess Home System found a way to slow that down. And it's hard to really like absolutely test these numbers that are being thrown out. But the IBIS is now claimed to be eight and a half stops on the OM1 Mark II. Maybe one day it'll be nine, one day it'll be 10. I have no idea. But I will say that I'm still getting the excellent stability. It's just rock solid, even with long telephoto lenses. And that aids not just getting good shots in focus sharply, but also also being able to actually find and stay on subjects, especially small ones with a long telephoto lens. So can it be done in firmware? Absolutely not. This is hardware based and it's good. Does it still uh, show the rotation of the earth? I don't know. The shots look fine to me. Whew. So the sun's really come out. It's getting warm. It's getting warm. Uh, but you know, when you're out here in nature on such a beautiful day, you just get inspired. And it makes me think of probably one of North American literature's most famous poems of all time. Let me recite it for you here. It's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. I am getting so hot. I will take my clothes off. Okay, so see this, this is about as waterfall as we are gonna get out in this location, but it does work for the testing of the live ND feature. I've loved this feature on the previous cameras. Now the OM1 Mark II brings this up to a seven stop ND equivalent. Again, remember that's without any filters. You can also see here that you can preview the exposure ahead of time, you can adjust it. You can see what kind of motion blur you're gonna get. And uh, it also works for RAW and JPEG. You will get a composited RAW file here, which is really nice to work with afterwards. So it's quite a powerful feature and I love using it. So can this be done in firmware? Maybe, maybe not though. I mean, it might really be up to the fact that we've got better IBIS in here, letting me handhold with that extra stop of light. It might be that we've got a bigger buffer, more RAM to be able to store more photos to composite. I don't know, but regardless, what we are getting is good sharpness, even handheld with this extra seven stops of ND. Okay, so another exciting feature. This is something we actually saw in the Panasonic G9 II as well. You can shoot now high res mode and get RAW files that are 14 bit instead of 12. We decided to do it handheld because we don't want to bring a tripod with us. That's one of the beauties of it, but you can get 80 megapixels, of course, if you use a tripod. Very quick to do. We tested against the OM1 and now the OM1 Mark II, and you can see that we do have a slight benefit with the 14 bit files, just a little bit more gradation, a little bit less noise in the shadows. So this is really positive for landscape photographers, Get your camera set up, put it in 14-bit RAW mode, and just get that extra detail. That's a big change, especially on Micro Four Thirds cameras. So kudos to the OM1 Mark II. Could you do this in firmware? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could. So hopefully we'll see it on the other cameras. Okay, let's talk about video on the OM1 Mark II. And unfortunately, I gotta start this conversation by saying that OM System still has not addressed some of the main issues we wanted to see fixed. So first off, 8-bit files on the OM1 and OM1 Mark II look the same, they're soft. That's okay, I mean, 10-bit files are sharper. But when you go to the 10-bit files in the OM1 and OM1 Mark II, you're still stuck using either OM Log or HLG. I mean, the disadvantage of being stuck with 
10-bit OM log footage to get that sharp video is that you got to edit and grade it afterwards and post quite a bit to get something that looks good. This is further compounded by a real issue that they haven't corrected, which is the histogram. So when you are using OM log, for example, with the camera, if you turn on view assist that you can actually see a nice looking representation of what you'll probably end up with in post, the histogram goes off of that punchier view assist. That does me no good. I need the histogram to show me what the OM log is capturing so that I know I have, I know that I've exposed properly. Then when I go into post afterwards, I can edit from there and make it look punchy and make it look vivid. This is a real issue and I don't know why they haven't fixed it yet. So then what pray tell video ambrosia have the gods rain down upon us from Mount OM system? Well, two things that we've actually seen before on the OM5. So we do have now webcam support without having to use an app or anything like that. I mean, that's nice. It's convenient and vertical video. All that means is if I turn the camera sideways and record videos, it's recording the metadata that was vertical video and it imports vertically. I mean, these are nice quality of life improvements, but they're very minor and nothing new that we haven't seen before. So can this be done in firmware? Absolutely. It was done in firmware and we wish we got more. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, quite a substantial improvement for the OM-1 Mark II. So that is the buffer length, how long you can shoot before the camera has to slow down. And this is very important if you're shooting wildlife and sports, especially on a camera that can max out at 120 shots per second. So to do our test here, we've got the same V90 speed SD card in both cameras, shooting raw only and shooting 50 frames per second. What we found is the OM-1 buffer is going to fill up after about 100 shots. It's going to slow down. With the OM-1 Mark II, we were able to get about 260 shots before it had to slow down. So this is a really nice improvement. Now, keep in mind, you are still, though, limited by the speed of the SD card, and SD cards clear pretty slowly. But I really love this feature, and I think wildlife and sports photographers are absolutely going to appreciate it. Can this be done in firmware? Absolutely not. This is all thanks to that extra RAM that they put inside the camera, and it's a good move. Okay, last feature we're going to talk about here on the OM-1 Mark II. This is very cool. So to go along with all the other fun composite computational photography modes that we have, we now have a live graduated ND filter. And this is really cool because it's not just coming down from the top of the screen. You can rotate this, you can change the thickness of it, move it across the frame. It's really cool. Also, this grad ND is being done not with a digital exposure change. This is multiple exposures taken over a different range and combined to create this grad filter. It's a fantastic feature for landscape photographers where you got a bright sky and darker foreground and you want to balance them uh, without having to do like multiple HDR shots and combine them afterwards or pull out an actual grad filter. Now this feature works a lot like high res mode does where you can composite multiple images and then you can make a JPEG or you can make a RAW, or you can make a RAW plus JPEG. That actually sets it apart from a lot of other brands. In fact, the only thing that would make it even better is we could combine some of these computational photographic features together. I think a lot of landscape photographers would love to have high res mode with the grad ND, for example. That would be awesome. Or high res mode with live ND. I mean, that would be a really nice feature to have, and that would make this camera punch way above its weight when it comes to landscape. Regardless, these are fantastic features to have, and it seems like OM System is the only one that's really running with this whole computational photographic technique business. So can this all be done in firmware? Yes, absolutely it could. It's nice that the OM-1 Mark II has it. Hopefully we'll see other cameras get it as well. Well, we're about ready to wrap things up and it turned actually out to be a fairly nice mild day, but sorry to all of you, it didn't get warm enough to do a full strip tease for you. Maybe in the summertime, we'll see, no promises. So first off, the Hawkland stuff. I mean, I really liked our main parka here when it was cold this morning. Kept me very warm. It doesn't make a lot of noise and it's quite soft. Not even that bulky, lots of attachments. But I do really like the inner puffy jacket. In fact, Jordan and I are both wearing it today as well. And then the inner fleece. I mean, this is great just to layer, get that extra warmth. I think on a previous video shoot, I did also just head out with this for the entire day. I mean, it is a nice warm kind of fleece without being too bulky. But you know, the build quality seems excellent there's tons of storage and I like the whole layered effect I never felt like I was unequipped for the weather either being too hot or too cold so really nice stuff you should definitely check out but now let's look at the conclusion for the OM-1 Mark II so do all the changes that we've talked about today warrant a new version of the OM-1, a flagship camera that honestly hasn't been out that long? I do think so, but I think it's a mixed bag. But I think a lot of people are saying, okay, could this have all just been done with firmware? And the answer is no, absolutely not. I mean, uh, you know, having the increased buffer, the extra RAM that goes in there, the better IBIS, these are substantial benefits that I really do like. But a lot of it is absolutely quality of life improvements. And I hope that we see those with firmware changes on other cameras from OMA system. And honestly, the video stuff, they're very minor updates. I really wish we could have seen some improvement there. 
Now, in a previous video, we compared the OM1 against the Panasonic G9 II because these really have become the de facto flagship cameras of the micro four thirds world. And we actually found the G9 II gave a very impressive showing, not only in video, in which case it just destroys the OM system, system, but also autofocusing capabilities. It would actually have a slight edge over the OM1. So it's now interesting to see that the OM1 Mark II, I think, takes that crown back. I mean, the tracking autofocus is much improved. Uh, the subject detection is nicer. The way you select is a little bit easier. And so I think that this is a big step for them, not to mention the bigger buffer as well. One other thing to consider as well, the OM1 Mark II has gone up in price and it is more expensive than the OM1 and substantially more than the Panasonic G9 II. And so you'll definitely need to factor that in if this is a camera that you're looking for in the micro four thirds world. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave those comments below. Let us know what you think about that. Uh, do also check out the podcast. You can find it on the same channel or all your favorite podcasting apps. Just look for Petapixel Podcast. Thanks so much guys for joining us. We'll see you soon with more episodes.